The following is a presentation of Play Fly Sports Properties and Michigan State Sports Property. Hey, everybody. Good evening. I like the dancing going on with the fellas on the show. Man. It is Tuesday, June 20th, 2023. I am your host, Jason Strayhorn, along with my co-host, Otis Wiley, and J.U. Choo Choo Culprit. And this is Spark MSU. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the show. Click those buttons. It helps us a lot. It's your first time listening. Thank you for joining the show. Don't forget to get into that live chat because that's absolutely where the party's at. And let us know where you're watching from. You know, that's all good. We like to see where people are from because, you know, I see people are watching us over in the Czech Republic, over what they call a Chesia. Is that correct, Choo Choo? You got Canada. <laughs> We got hey, is, I, I got nothing. Uh, we got all kind of places, fellas. I, I was surprised hey. he was like, you know, uh, I got family in uh, the Czech Republic. <laughs> we got a flag. Definitely, I want. We want to definitely give everybody, guys, a shout out because we asked for it and we received it. We finally hit the one thousand subscriber mark on YouTube, which is the hard one to get, as we all know. Thank you very much. And we applaud you. Guys, what do you think about that? We need that, we need that crowd noise, the applause noise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's uh, awesome. Boom, 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 boom. That's boom, awesome. Boom, boom, boom. Appreciate, appreciate everybody, you know, that uh, you know, pushed it, pushed the narrative for us to get to this point. Um, you know, we always talk about going back to, you know, on the iHop recording from an iPhone, and <laughs> here we are. <laughs> Yeah, hey, I think I think uh I think on Thursday we need to like bring out that like clip of that footage <laughs> on, that, on, that, on that phone. We should we should hey, get that. Happy Ooh. birthday to Harriet. Harriet yeah, Dean. Today's her Harriet. birthday. Happy birthday, Harriet. Harriet hey, Dean. You got to ride that bus, man. <laughs> Live yeah, show from the Tiki Hut. Guys, we got a jam-packed show because we know we got a special guest on. A Spartan legend joins the show. But right now, we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, we had something funny happen in the news. We talk about all things college sports. And this thing was just, it's not necessarily Michigan State related, but it's something that was too big for us to pass up. Austin Simmons commits to Ole Miss, but he reclassifies from the 2025 to the 2023. The kid had a 5.34 GPA. <laughs> hey, look. I want him on my team, fellas, if you know what I mean. Hey, I'm like, the math ain't math. Yeah, I, know ain't math I, I didn't know, know you went that. <laughs> hey, oh, what? That's on a, is that a genius level? I'm, I don't know. <laughs> is that the, that's the untapped education level that we have not reached or ever superseded. So I thought it was a ceiling of like at least a four, four, three, four, like four, like GPA higher than that, but a five, three. It's like, uh, that's a Rhodes Scholar in my book. <laughs> it's unbelievable. True. I mean, I like, 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 almost I'm as good as you. you. Right. I'm with Otis on that. It's like, the math ain't mathing. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like, I feel I like that commitment. Goes to straight, I feel like that commitment should have been like a Stanford. <laughs> right. Instead of going to Ole right? Instead of going to Ole Miss. Yeah. I know, I Anticlimactic. <laughs> oh, Miss. Hotty yeah. Dwayne Kiffin. Yeah, man. Hotty Toddy. The sip. Hey, you know what? This is a good question. This is a good question for the group. Would you use a full right scholarship knowing he's going to get a full right academic scholarship? I feel like if you're in that threshold, like <coughs> you all full 100% academic, everything paid for, you, for you, like we use that scholarship for somebody else. But he, he playing me full full sky. That he won't he won't be able to get the meals. <laughs> oh, that ch that changed now. That's, that's, that's all changed. Everybody eats. absolutely. Everybody eats. Everybody eats. Oh, everybody eats. Okay. You know how much leftover food? Everybody eats. Everybody eats. <laughs> they don't have like separate cafeterias anymore. <laughs> no, like like how bad it was back then with us. Yeah, like treat it. <laughs> I used to be I had it bad. That was so wrong. I, we had it bad. And then we're going to talk to our special guest. Uh, he's going to give you some stories, I guarantee you, on what training table used to be like compared yeah. to what it is today. We used to, to have the, the, the tide started to turn with, with training table, like my junior year. So when we started going mm -hmm. to restaurants and everything mm -hmm. like that, 
What year was that? 06? 06. Yeah. 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 That's when it started. Then it, yeah, then it started to turn because upperclassmen then wants to give us young un, underclassmen rides. <laughs> I stayed giving people rides. You did. You did. <laughs> Hey, I think, I think Harriet joined us late. So we once again, we want to say happy birthday to Harriet Dean. I think she came on a little later. So today here, the first one. Oh, happy Harriet, birthday, Harriet. Happy birthday, Harriet. Yeah. Hey, look, Harriet, Harriet is always invited to the cookout. So she gets the... Yeah. <laughs> she gets, she gets the, the senior wonder version. <laughs> oh, she gets it all. She, Harriet, she, she gets the, the Stevie Wonder? Right, yeah. she'll get the she'll get happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday, Harry. Yes, we, we, we got us this is what we do at this is part of We sing happy birthday to the loyal listeners that are on the show. This is what we do. That's we had a birthday part. party for my daughter. Oh, uh, on Saturday. So we had to sing both versions. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee your daughter was like, uh, where's, the, where's that baby shark version, bro? <laughs> the Liberian and the Canadian. <laughs> we had to sing it all. <laughs> oh, so your baby girl, so your birthday is the day before Father's Day. You know, not so good for my, my, my youngest son, Cody. His birthday was on Father's Day. He got shortchanged, you know. Mm. But still, it was a good birthday for him. That's the way it is. Guys, we got us a long snapper commitment at MSU. Drew Wilson, the new commitment. Chill, you love kickers. What do you feel about long snappers? Long snappers punt, uh, snap to punters. I like that for, the, for that side of things. Um, we need the help in long snapping. Last year, our long snapping was shaky at best very shaky and there's a lot that goes into that um you know the timing you always you know Otis you said it last year when you notice how important it was when coach Felino always had that stopwatch timing those long snaps yeah. I mean those punts and everything like that so it's a big part you know of everything and that's something that gets lost in in the shuffle of everything and we we felt that last year because we were hurt because you always preach win on all three phases of the game offense defense and special teams it's called special teams for a reason you have to have some special talents to play that position um so the long snapper i'll welcome him in until he snaps one over the punter's head or snaps one you know a bad one for the field goal or something like that then he's off my island <laughs> <laughs> He's off your island or is he on the island? Because, like, <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with you, uh, too. It, it's it's got to be the quickest snap and get to, for punt, get to field coverage, right? Mm -hmm. Feel the punt. Uh, there's no pressure because you can't touch the punter on any phases, right? You can't. The snapper. Well, you're a snapper. I'm sorry. You, can, you, can, you can't touch the punter either. It's roughing punt kicker, right? Anywho, sorry. Um, no, for the long snapper, you can't touch them. So, like, there's no pressure. But in those tense moments, like, let's flash back to Indiana, where the snap was good, <laughs> right? The snap was good. It's the kicker. So, like you said, three phases. There's special teams, offense, defense. But there's phases in that long snap, that holding, and then the kicker, field goal. So, it's got to be Smith snapping. I always, I always ask why Felino used to walk around just to kind of look, <laughs> look like he was doing something. And then I don't think it was it the year he had the megaphone. He was yeah, yeah, he yeah. was talking script like change, change the uh, periods. Um, but yeah, to your point, good grab. Uh, like you said, long snappers are athletes now, man. So let's see how he uh, adjusts and adapts. <laughs> I'm not, I don't go that far. <laughs> hey, man. Take, hey. Pepper, you remember Sack Rider? <laughs> yeah, I, I, like I said, I wouldn't go that far. Peppers, I would give him. You know, he he's he's making his thing in the league there. Um, oh, so since he made it to the league, you did. No, he's doing his thing. Don't athlete. you make it there? You can make it for years. You you in? Like yeah. So I I get it. Usually, like you know, they're like old tight ends. You know that you know don't even do anything. See, my thing, they don't do anything. That's the thing, you know, like they go out there, want, we're out there in individuals sweating, doing things, and they just kicking it on the sidelines there, doing new things. And then we had a long snapper when I was on scout team my freshman year when I was red shirting. He always be like, hey, 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 chill, chill, chill. I'm working on a new snap. I'm like, mother, you know, how many new snaps are there? You snapping the ball 15 yards or you're snapping at seven? 
that's it. <laughs> but, hey, this is the best tough ever. Pepper's if you want to get you on the roster, Hank Pepper's still there. <laughs> uh, he's, is he? Is there a relation to Tabor? Pepper? Hank Pepper? I know we got I'm not sure. Peppers. So so that, that it, check. it was one of our subscribers. So you know, you know, you, you know, Tony, Tony G already on that. Or Trevor, Trevor, who was on our who follow us, they know all the answers. Yeah, Tom, yeah. all those guys. <laughs> you know, guys, we gotta get we'll move on to Draymond Green declines his option with the Warriors. What does that say about Draymond's future with the Warriors next year? I don't make enough money being that that bracket to be talking about discussions and turning down the millions of dollars. So that's a different <laughs> conversation. Uh, I'm like, do what you do best. But clearly, if you turn that down, you know for a fact that you got a you got a baller, the number one agent in the game, Rich Paul, and some other suitors out there is probably going to give him more. So I just I feel like now this is strategically business move, support him whatever. But we we did see the the Warriors new GM come out and say, hey. We absolutely have to have Draymond here. Um, we have to do our best to get him and keep him here. So he has show, showed value and worth. Um, and he's not just, you know, a guy that's going to, you know, be Draymond. Like, he is a great facilitator, a great teammate. Uh, if you turn on that money, like, obviously there's a bigger picture. <laughs> there's a plan. So, like I said, I'm not at liberty to be talking about millions of dollars because – you know, I ain't, I ain't up there making that, but it's 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 one of those. You can talk about it. I can talk about it, but you I ain't talking about it. But <laughs> no, I think um, you know, I said this um back when the Warriors were in the playoffs. I think Draymond's um tenured with the Warriors is you know coming to a close, and you two were like, oh man, you 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 guys acted like you were in that scene from um Eddie from coming to America when he said he ran into Dr. Martin Luther King. Man, you ain't never ran on Dr. King. That's how you guys acted like that when I said that. But I, <laughs> oh, this is a reference. Here we go. I think, you know, he, he, he wants, obviously, I think at the end of the day, he wants to stay in Golden. He wants to stay a warrior. I think, you know, should he stay a warrior? Yes. I think, you know, cementing his career, you know, with one team that his entire career, it just adds to it. You know, there's only a few guys that have done that. And uh, so if he, you know, he wants to do that, but I think there is some, um, you know, different opportunity. I think that chemistry was lost with the team. And there was even, they even, he even said it, you know, once he knocked out Jordan Poole, all the trust on that team was gone. How can you get that back? They just re up Jordan Poole, so he's going to be there for a while. Is there room for both of them there? Um, you know, he was in France on Sunday uh, with Le one LeBron James, you know, out there. Here we go right here in France on Sunday with LeBron. LeBron's trying to recruit guys to L.A. right now. It's a short trip, you know. Um, so I think, you know, I, I love Draymond. I think like his – his time, his tenure may be running out in Golden State with with some of the antics and everything like that, like, you know, getting ejected, you know, suspensions, um, you know, the, the friction within the team, the trust is gone. And even the GMs said, you know, they would still be playing. But even Steve Kerr said the trust was gone once he knocked out Jordan Poole. So I think there's going to be, you know, I don't think, you know, like it's, it's as cut and dry that Draymond's going to be back in Golden State. Mm. Hey, you know, my favorite part of that picture is that LeBron and Draymond are, where are they at? France? Mm -hmm. right and, and they're incognito with those bucket hats and sunglasses. So just so you know, like that, no, that no <laughs> one, I'm sure, when they stand up and walk around France, the streets of Saint-Tropez, no one knows who those guys in the bucket hats and glasses hey, are. That's a, look like that's a nice right. little stogie in his hand, too. Bro. Right, right. Have you ever been to San Tropez, see your brother play the mandolay? <laughs> <laughs> hey, for one Spartan legend, hey, look, we're gonna have we're gonna have a incredible running back. One of the guys, uh, Chuchu thinks the godfather of running backs in Michigan. That's history. facts, hundred percent facts, right there. Joining. This is Sparta MSU after a message from our friends over at IHOP. IHOPY Hour, starting at $6 at 3 p.m. Only from IHOP. 
Download the app and join the rewards program today. Is that the man, the myth? Look at it. Look at the, the ability. Mm. I don't, I don't, are we, are, can, can you guys hear us right now as we watch this? Yeah. Double yeah. spin. And, and that was like this 52 is, right there. Look at the okay. detail. I feel like, I feel like, hey. I feel like Mr. Zoe was, was a child's no player for Marshawn Lynch. Boy. Hey. <laughs> Lorenzo White joins us as far as you. Welcome to the show, Lorenzo. How you doing, brother? I'm good. What's going on, fellas? What's happening? <laughs> well, congratulations to you because just yesterday we learned that you are now a newly inducted member to the Michigan Sports Hall of Fame. About time. Good job, man. Congratulations on that. Thank you guys very much. You know, um, I don't know. I'm. I think I'm finding um, running out of uh, shelves to put stuff on. <laughs> 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 you know, um, in January, um, I was voted to the um, to the Rose Bowl Hall of Fame. So you know, so I'm happy for them all. You know. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, it's it's such a great you know honor to have you on because, you know, as a as a, you know, running back myself and a running back that played at Michigan State, when you come into Michigan State, you know, the first thing you hear about, it, you know, you talk, you, there's the greats, but there's Lorenzo White, you know, unmistakably, undoubtedly, you know, the best to to you know be, line up in the backfield at Michigan State. You talk to, I remember we we're in um, Seattle when we played against Washington, and you know we're in the room there, and TJ Duckett was there, and I was like, Duck, you know, like, wh who do you say the top three you know running backs in Michigan State history? And he, without a doubt, you know, the Godfather's number one, Lorenzo. You know that, and everybody knows and feels that, and it's just a you know like it's so cool to have you you know to be you know in the same position group you know as someone like you and uh so you you had you know a lot of you know great you know great a great career at michigan state but let's talk about a little bit like the longevity you know how you did it you took you got a ton of carries you know how did you keep yourself you know in shape and like physical that you can go out and play every single week well i just think you know when you you, you talk about that um you know when you when you're young, that's all you want to do is carry the football, you know, and and making that um, decision to go to Michigan State. Um, if you had to ask anybody when I was coming out of school, the everybody had me pegged to go to Georgia uh, because of uh, Herschel Walker and the things that he did and the things that Georgia do uh, with the running backs and being down south. Um, you know, when I went to Michigan State, Man, it was just uh, one of them things. I mean, like it just like it felt good when I went to go uh, visit. Uh, felt like that was my place, you know. Um, you know, we talked about all the all the star running bikes that went to all the universities. So I wanted to have my own little niche when I went to Michigan State, and mm -hmm. you know, instead of going there and say Hirsch Walker and Lorenzo White, my thing is I wanted to go to Michigan State and be the man. Yeah. See, that's 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 what he said. Be the man, because that's like at that point, not say unconventional choice. Because I mean, everybody grew up watching Herschel Walker, and and I see the yeah. steps of like, hey, you know, they're gonna pay respect and give you the ball there because they're running the one of the ball. But for you to come here and wear the green and white, I try to find a picture. I was in Texas, born and raised in Austin. My class picture, I think it was third, third grade. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I ain't trying. You the OG, right? <laughs> I had Michigan State. I had the, I had the, the Lorenzo White jersey. My parents were flipped though, right? So I had the Lorenzo White jersey in my class picture, and not knowing that I was going to be playing at Michigan State, I, I need to find it. I need to put it on social, but I wanted to say, look, I grew up watching, <laughs> watching y'all, man. Uh, so. Uh, Talk about just talk about just uh, staying around and being around the program. You know, you did so much for the green and white, and we had one of your 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 teammates in uh, Tony Mandarich on last was that last week two weeks? Everything flies by when we have a lot of guests. Two Thursdays ago. Two Thursdays ago. 
go, man, look, content, baby, yeah. it's going good. But he talked about that team and full of characters, but full of like just outstanding stud athletes. But y'all were a lot, y'all were family, y'all were brothers. But talk about that, that Rose Bowl game, but like having all of that high quality talent. You at the running back, you had two wide right receivers, you had Tony. Uh, just talk about just that that whole run with that team there. Well, you know, and, and coming, you know, like I said, that's that's that bond, you know. Uh, when you your teammates, you I mean, you you know, we came in and we had been through a lot and um you know that was one of the one of our goals was to go you know go on and i mean i'm talking about not just one person but all everybody um that team go um my thing was you know you know to try to get to that rose bowl and uh oh oh we're getting good there, we go. there you go can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When, you, uh, when you when you when you when you're a family and man, it was just I mean, it was just so good to you know the fellowship and to hang out with those guys and you know to grow with those guys. So and you guys know because you guys, you know, I mean, the early days and um, y'all did come, you know, bond together, and that's what we did. Hang on. Well, I think we're having some uh, technical difficulties there. Uh, Are we back? Yep. Yeah. Yep. You're back. Yeah. So you know, I was just saying that. I mean, you guys know how uh, how important it is. You know, when you first get to college and and everybody bonds together. So and that's just what we did. You know, um, and. Um, my, my last year was just great, you know, that, I mean, for us to get a chance to go play in the Rose Bowl. Mm -mm. Yeah, and they're showing it right here, that 1988 Rose Bowl. Yeah. You're looking live. Yeah. I mean, down there in <laughs> you know, you got a lot of talent down in South Florida. Oh, yeah. A whole lot of talent. How did, was George yeah. Perlis able to come down there? Because that's the coach that you had, GP. That was your man. How was he able to come down and get you up to Michigan State? Like I said, uh, coming back, you know, um, I was a big uh, motivator, you know, of myself, you know, and things that I wanted to accomplish, you know, so I set my goals kind of high. So, and then when he came down, he just made, made it, you know, certain that, oh, I can do all the things that I want. And if I, if I come here, if I come to Michigan State, um, they're going to do everything in their power for me to try to obtain it. You know, the most important thing, you know, for me was to, you know, come there and win. But, you know, I always had the Heisman Trophy on my mind to win it, not once, but twice. So um, I just, you know, uh, we talked about uh, we talked about Herschel Walker, you know, and the things that he did, you know, so. You know, saying your goal was high. Uh, when I came in and um, he was right there, Perlis was right there on the side of me, you know, um, helping me and, you know, feed, feed me the rock too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you 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 got the rock. And like some running, like I remember Javon and I talking like, man, so used to be getting the ball like 40 <laughs> times a game. And here we struggling to split with 10 carries, you know, 20 carries in a game between uh, the both of us there. And you were just eating that. <laughs> It, hey, it wasn't easy. You forgot I you forgot who I had at wide out. <laughs> right, right. That's true. <laughs> yeah, talk so, about that. I, uh, you know, I, I have a brother, you know, I have my brother, uh, you know, so um and uh, you know, so, um, when it all happens, when it all uh, when it all happens. You know, I just think that's what that's what it comes down to. Like, you know, when you you got your brother, you know, and that's one thing that uh, me and Dre did. Um, it was just one of those things, you know. Um, we ran the ball a lot, but you know. Yeah, that was that that was a absolute lethal uh, combination there, you know. And you know, just looking back at you know, all those uh, 
guys that you had that you had Tony Manrich running the picture that you had Andre Risen that you had you know yourself there just a just a team and you know that's one of those yeah. offenses not enough ball to go around <laughs> you know now <in the laughs> right. everyone was deadly it's, it's all good man but like we, gotta, we, gotta, we, we, we can talk about it for like yeah, for sure. But like, I want to, I want to just go back. Like, I wish we had mic'd up in like offensive huddle, right? <laughs> All those personalities of like, when a call comes in and be like, Andre, Andre Rising, like, no, nah, throw me the ball, or like, so like, no, nah, give me the rock. You know, I want to see if they have one of those, right? <laughs> like a booby miles, like give booby the ball. <laughs> right, right. It, it's so, uh, you know that that's one of the big things because, like, you know, like I said. You know, we're sitting in there, we're talking to, you know, Coach Enos about and some of the older guys tell you when they come back and just talk about those days and like the 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 legacy, you know, that um those guys brought and a guy like L- L- Lorenzo. Um and it's you know, like you said, it's good to see him, you know, every season, you know, he's back. You know, he's back at Spartan Stadium watching the games and everything like that. You know, coming back, it's really cool to see. Um, I do know, you know, I was chasing him chasing him for that my senior year being, you know but it's it's so cool to be you know he's one i'm number two you know in that book there so uh it's it's you know so that was like your one that was your one up just to say one down <laughs> no no i'm just <laughs> like, i remember <laughs> like, no, like, no, what's no. going on you know talking to him you and know one, one down the three, line. and i see you have 39 yeah yeah, so you 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 are. Three. He was chasing him. He was like, "Come on, man!" Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's Lorenzo at forty three, Jay Langford at forty. This is touchdowns, career touchdowns. Oh, Jay, Jay, yeah. Jay you at thirty nine. So, so you didn't, for the single season, you oh, didn't Jay, get it. For the Jay single Lang, season. Jay Langford passed you yeah. up that that year. That it was that Rose Bowl year, wasn't it? For hey, Jeremy hey, Langford hey, to the. the <laughs> He didn't, yeah, catch, yeah. he didn't catch him, though. He didn't catch him. Uh, you know, he you talking about, you know, I just, I, I man, I just enjoy, you know, just watching, I mean, all you guys, you know, play. My thing was, you know, one thing I do, I do bleed, uh, I bleed green. And um, at the end of the day, uh, when it comes to, when it comes to the yardage, I mean, all of them, Le'Veon, you know, uh, man. Javon, I mean, come on. I mean, we can just we can just keep going. I love, I mean, I love my school for that. <laughs> you know, that I mean we could say running about you too. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Exactly. 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 Yeah. yeah. Bucket brothers. I mean, man, it's a lot. Yeah. Right. And that's I mean that, and that's what it's about, you know. Um, Lorenzo, um, when we had uh Tony Manrich on the show and we talked about the Rose Bowl. For him, he said like it was more rewarding clinching against Indiana for that uh, Big Ten title than the Rose Bowl. Is that the same for you, man? That I mean, the Rose Bowl was the Rose Bowl, but at the end of the day, that game at Indiana, when you had like everybody. Oh, yeah, look, I feel like the, oh. the content guys. Once it start getting good, it's just so good. <laughs> there we go. You know what? Every, so, tell, tell, every, tell him, see everywhere you, can, you go. Turn this video off. Turn this video off. Turn your video off. He's on. good. He's good. Oh, he's good? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> Damn. No. Like, I was like, turn the video off, and I think the audio will be straight. But, um, man, I was getting that. That's going on. That's, we got to get them on for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that's what so happens good, when you're live. So this is live. This, this is, is what happens when you're live. Live podcast, baby. We gonna deal with it. You gonna come back, but like, like you guys were talking about right there. You know, you want to deal with. You said running back. You was that something that you thought about too when when you were when you get recruited? Yeah, absolutely. That's one of the reasons. Um, you know, I did go to Michigan State is because one, they like big backs. You know, you got Lorenzo was a big back. You know, T.J. Duckett was a big back. You know. 
Le'Veon Bell was a big back. You know, all those guys, they liked big bruising back in the Big Ten there. And, uh, you know, that that is exactly one of the reasons you want to said that lineage, you know, of running the football and having, you know, those kind of, you know, the opportunity to, one, play in the Big Ten, and then, two, you know, you know you're going to run the ball, you know, because that's how you win football games, especially in November in the Big Ten. No doubt about it, man. What you thinking, though? Man, look, I want to know, like, the full recruiting pitch, like back then, too, was the video of like paying homage to the <laughs> running back greats, like the Mount Rushmore of running of running backs. And it's like you, if you come here, you can be up on the Mount Rushmore. Like, I want to like at that time, what were they truly talking like? Straight out when you got there, they you had a, it, yeah, big backs. But like, what was the full pitch though? So you know, um, you know, my recruiting guy was. Uh, my recruiting coach was Jeff Stoutland. And oh, I thought you were about to say Reggie Mitchell. No, no, no. So Stoutland, you know he's an offensive line coach. Offensive line coaches want to run the football. And then so he's talking about, you know, all these guys, these greats, you know, that, that you know, walked the halls and did all that, you know, at Michigan State. And then we did go to the running backs room with Reggie Mitchell. <laughs> and uh, they had highlights, you know, and it started, you know, the, it started with a different music. It was like music by era, you know. It was like different music. Like they had highlights of Lorenzo, you know, all those other guys, you know, Cedric, and all this. And then the music started going changing different as we got to newer. And then the hip hop started coming in, you know, when they show T.J. Duck and then Lil John Flowers, all those guys. It was just like a cool transition into. And then at the end of the tape, it just said, "You're next." You know, kind of thing. And then, mm. you know, could you not want to go? I know. Like, oh, <laughs> you know, and, then, it was a and, and then they said, what would your music be? <laughs> oh, man. Look, did what you, did you say? <laughs> chicken fry? I don't even remember. I don't even remember what I said. Oh, oh man. Just, that's so oh, man, that's got, great. We, we got to hear that one more time before we go. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't even know. What you... <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. Oh, that's my hilarious. God. So if you, like, you guys, I know we've we've talked about this um, as running backs. And this is, you know, like I tell you, know, talk to, you know, Javon about this, you know, talk to TJ Duckett about this. And I've asked them, you know, rate your top, top five running backs at Michigan State, you know, of all time. And, you know, it's. it's you never say you? No, I, why is it? Why, like, what did I do? Like, <laughs> I'm trying to have a conversation. Yeah. Inquiring minds just want to know too, like how to run. I'm trying to get. I'm trying to. I'm trying to give well, the people. Right, what he's asking here. you, like, do you rate? I feel like it, as a per personal, if I'm two two, I'm putting myself in the top five. I definitely put myself. Record, I, I put like, myself at okay, number that's five. What he's asking. Yeah, that's what he's asking. That's what he's asking. No, he said, "Are you trying to get them you know, to say you?" Cannot look it. <laughs> I didn't say you're you know what. I, I didn't, you're not. You're not. But the, the thing is this. The thing is this. Let me tell you this. I think all. I think the three of us left K nine off the top five. Ooh, why? It's only one year. Because it was a one hit wonder. We were talking about body of work. Body of work. If you go Consistent. top, if you go top seasons, like start like dog, Spartan girls that started freshman year to leave leaving the program. I get you. So yeah. We're gonna end this whole era right here. <laughs> oh, you talking about this era? Absolutely. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just saying I'm saying like if you look I'm we're we're everyone's like looking at full body of work, you know, that kind of thing. If if you go one season, K9's up there, you know, for one of the best seasons. He's probably two for one of the best seasons, you know? I mean does that one season <laughs> cover like multitudes of three three seasons because he went off on that year <laughs> so, i mean what he did to michigan alone you, you gotta allow him to be in the top five yeah. i mean you have to i'm just letting you know what happened what was said in the running back i hear you we, I you, hear you. we can agree I mean, to disagree I just let you know what was said in the running back i, I just hey, you gotta, top five uh, rappers alive i thought it was gonna be like choo 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 <laughs> choo <laughs> I'm not saying like, and, and don't get me wrong. See, now people are saying like, I already know what's going to happen. It's going to get out there. Jay, you didn't, doesn't think K9's one of the best backs to come out. And that is not true. 
I was we were talking career body of work at Michigan State. Just putting that out there. So before everyone starts jumping in the comments and trying to get at your boy, <laughs> man. Oh, no, you know, like, no mama's straight gonna have a social media yeah, clip on you so for sure. Back on here. And you, you guys touched on a little bit when you talked about I'm gonna ask here it comes right here. Cause hey, hey, Lo, we gotta get we trying yeah. to get it right here. We're trying. Okay. Well. <laughs> Like you, you got some great stories, man. I've been, you know, hanging out with you for a long time. Like the story, you, can you tell the story about Andre coming to practice with a neck roll? <laughs> <laughs> so um, we're um, we we coming to practice, and uh, Andre was just fed up, right at this point, you know. Not getting the uh, not getting the ball that much, so he was like, "Oh, I'm just I'm just gonna be a blocker. I'm just gonna be a blocker, right?" So um, we come out with practice, and he got on uh, he got on he got on gloves, lineman gloves. He got a neck brace. On. <laughs> so, so he run out, and everybody laughing, right? And 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 GP seeing right. Oh my God, he, GP lost it. I'm talking about like, it, I don't know how many cuss words he got in that one. <laughs> in that one God damn it, Andre! What are you doing? You trying to be funny? <laughs> Get your ass in there, and take that. <laughs> and I'm talking about he walked the ball. I'm talking about GP cuss Andre out all the way to he went in the locker room and came back with the. <laughs> <laughs> Tough love, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I mean, but you know, when I when I when I think about when I think about George, you know, and I look at all the things that he did, but it's only fitting that he can do that because anytime you gotta you gotta imagine his job in the pros with the Pittsburgh Steelers. You got uh you got white, you got mean Joe Green, you got LC Greenwood, and you know how I you know how you know how it is when we in our meetings and when they're getting on the coach. So what what do you think what do you think? How I mean I I would have just gave anything to just see George in the uh in one of those meetings like with, with Pittsburgh, you know, with the steel curtain. <laughs> <laughs> For all them Hall of Fame be lining. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, uh, you talking about personality? Oh my God, that was like, I mean, because White, oh my God, he, I mean, he is a character. If you ain't never met him, I mean, I'm talking about, um, I mean, that guy's, I mean, I, I just like I, when I when I heard and I talked with him, I said I would just give any 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 time just to see him in in a meeting with you guys. So, but that I guess you know when you when you when you in in a meeting and you you know you got those type of guys in your stable. I mean, you can handle anything, you know. So, uh, I respect them. You know, I respect the things that he did. You know, um, how he handled me. You know, because I mean, it wasn't you know when I first got there, um, he was like, I could start you like I could start you right now. He said, but I wanna I wanna get your feet wet. I want to get your feet where you did and, and, and everything that you did, you deserve to start, but I just want you to get your feet wet because I don't want you to fail, you know, and that's how um, he handled me. So with that, with that there, you know, coming in as a kid, you know, with the mindset of you want to win two Heismans, did you take it as, you know, like, man, or were you like pissed off about it? No, I mean, because once, I mean, it's like, you got to understand, you know, when only person could put me in the game was GP, so I got to stand next to him, right? So you, I never know when I'm going in, going in the game, but once I go in the game, that's it. It ain't no more throwing. I'm getting the ball every time. And I mean, I remember like the second game, last like second game. I never ever forget that. Um, well, the first game we go to Colorado. We play in Colorado, and um, I don't do nothing. I mean, I'm I just get the ball, just run straight, don't do anything special. So I'm on the plane all the way from Colorado to Michigan. I'm like, 
cussing and fussing myself out. Oh, you sorry. You ain't do nothing when you, when you got the ball. So <laughs> I said, Lord, if you I promise you, if you get on and um that chance was the next week when we played against Notre Dame. I said everybody gonna know my name. <laughs> right? So we get to um we now Colorado was small. I mean it was like forty some thousand. And then we played we played Notre Dame home, so it was like eighty some thousand, right? So I'm like, man, it's a lot of people. It's like this is nothing. Wait the next week, man. I came out, and I'm talking about we playing against Notre Dame. And you know how it is when you play against how we play against Notre Dame. It's, I mean everybody. We had Coach Buck, and man, Coach Buck, <laughs> Coach, Coach, Coach Buck, I love him to death. I mean, Coach Buck told us, I mean, one of the linemen came in late because they said they had class. He said, no, it's no class. It, it's no class during the week when we play <laughs> Michigan, Notre Dame, <laughs> or Ohio State. <laughs> 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 Tony, brought huh? <laughs> Tony brought up Coach Buck in, in the league when he talked. That's old line coach at the time, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. right. Listen, listen, if, I mean, like, the coach, I mean, if you ever seen Verge, Verge Meredith and uh, Rocky, that's that's Coach Buck all day. Mickey. And I'm talking about he rolled his hat up. This, that's what he's. <laughs> and I'm, and I'm talking about you know. Oh, I gotta tell you about the other. Okay, I, it, it's another time. Okay, so we get ready to play against uh, Illinois. So. Um, Coach Buck, go up to everybody. You ready to play? You ready to play? You know, what do you want to do? Mm. Mm. Well, that's, hey, that story good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Andre, Andre gets slapped. Yeah, Andre gets slapped, right? And then he just, uh, Andre was like, uh, everybody looking at what he's going to say. I mean, he started crying. Next thing I knew, Andre just got up. <laughs> We're all just hanging on our edges of our seats. <laughs> you are. Hey, you know what? We want to, I feel like we want to get, when he come up, we got to we do, do a live. live. With, with his, yeah. We got to do a live with him because, like, that's going to be. <laughs> That's gonna be really lit when he comes oh in. Oh my gosh, man, that's tough right there. You, he's got this is a good. That's a good. Yeah, I know. Technology. Hey, this is uh, true. Was you were you there when Coach Nitro came and Coach D brought him back? No, and talked no. To us? no. <laughs> oh man, you, you experienced it, huh? Oh man, I we were sitting up there. This is no, this might have been John L though, because uh, we were in the old. It wasn't shut no, it was, down. It was, it was it was 07 because we were we. Well, we I was were, there 07. The new facility, so we have it. Well, 07 after the 07, like that. Uh, what is it? 08 spring. So he was gone. Okay, because because we were in the old meeting room, like where we used to be. Yeah, the they up the facility. Yeah. But I, yeah, and I remember him coming up and. I kept when he was talking, I couldn't stop staring at the st <laughs> this is so bad, but rest in peace, Coach Buck, Coach Buck, but he had just those strands of hair over his hair. And he was like, you could tell he was trying to talk like a good coaching, like pregame speech. This is for spring game too, like spring game 08. And uh we we knew he was a legend, uh, but it was one of those things where that's when Coach D was bringing back history, right? Like coming back and connecting the back. Uh, but to his point, his his uh his speech was so high intensity that I honestly thought he was gonna pass out. <laughs> yeah, but has been known I thought he was gonna pass out. He was about like, the game that he would. Yeah, like, dentures would come out. I mean, dude was something else. I mean, like he was really, really, really an intense. He was all American as a player, and and uh, and was a great coach, longtime coach at Michigan State. But yeah, that. Coach Buck is is definitely a, a treasure, a national treasure that most of us won't get a chance to see. Uh, but I, I don't know if we can try to bring Low on one more time to see if the connection is there. Let's try one more time. Let's see. Where we at? There he is. You guys, bye. <laughs> we here. <laughs> 
We're trying to work through the connection, man. Well, we're gonna try it one more time here. Like, yeah, yeah. The stories are great. I heard, I heard, <laughs> yeah, I heard what you said about uh, the story about Coach Buck. But one thing that I really, really, really love him, I uh, love about Coach Buck is that do you know all of those plays? I mean, like even when after my um after my freshman year, he came up with the uh, 238 tailback draw, right? And he was like, um, we're gonna do this because um Renzi, that's what he called me. He said, What well, Renzi gonna what he's gonna do, we don't know where he's going anyway. So we just let him start one way and he can do what he wanna do, right? And um <laughs> When he put that, when he put that, he put that play in, and we played against Iowa. Iowa had the number one, uh, the number one defense in the country, right? That one play, one, that's one play, and we always ran toss thirty-eight. But that that play, that two thirty, uh, two thirty-eight draw, that went for two hundred twenty-six yards, and it could have been more, you know. <laughs> but um. All he did, all that coach did, he lived and ate football. You know, um, I'm passing by the room one day, and I can see the, the lights was off. And I keep hearing the, um, the film project that keep going and stopping, right? So I was like, dang, who, who in there? So it was Coach Buck. So I walked in there. He was like, um, he was like, uh, hey, Renzi, how you doing? I said, I'm doing fine, Coach. What, what's going on? You all right? He said, um, no. He said, I'm pissed off at the, um, I'm pissed off at the four hole. I said, um, what's wrong with the four hole? He was like, um, he took every one of the plays, right? Each one of the plays, he let me know how many yards we got in each one of the holes, and he said, we're not being productive in the four hole. <laughs> like, like who does that? Like, like, come on, like, you know, I'm talking about he done broke it all down. Like, how many yards I done got from each one of those holes? Right. And he said, We're not, we're not being productive in the four hole. So I was like, Coach, well, I mean, I was like, I, I, thought, I, thought we, I thought we was fine. You know, I said, Coach, I mean, you talking about um uh, we're on the road for almost two we on the road at that time it was like almost what I had like what like maybe like sixteen hundred yards, right? Mm. And we still had we still had more uh a few more games to go. Man. So, and that, <laughs> was, you know, so that was almost five hundred yards. Yeah, that was, you know that was yeah. So everybody, everybody I mean that's know, man, because they broke up but like who slapped rising? They wanna know. Coach Buck slapped rising. He was getting, you know, that that's I mean, when he slapped rising. I mean, when he slapped him, and um I just grabbed his face and everybody was like, oh, and nobody knew what 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 response that Andre was gonna have, right? Andre Andre I did I did uh wipe this tear from he was like that's what kill son of a <laughs> So everybody ran out, and everybody was like, "I'm talking about we ran out that door." I was like, "Man, everybody thought he was just been the fight coach." But I was like, "Oh no!" <laughs> but he, he said, "He said he right wiped the tear from his eyes." <laughs> oh my goodness! One tear. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, uh, hey, hey. I, like, but I mean, but it's 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 like it. I mean, it's just like so many. It's like so many stories because you know, it's like remember I just told you about the about the four hole, right? So when we went to practice, so if you could picture me lining up with a full back there and Coach Buck sitting like he's right behind the person at the four hole who's blocked at the guard. He he's sitting right there. So Coach Perlis get mad and say, "Buck, get out of there." Coach Buck tell uh, Coach uh, Perlis tell Buck Buck get out of there. He said, "Don't worry about it, George. I got to get some production out of this four hole." Right? So, <laughs> Coach Perlis, <laughs> Coach Perlis said, "Okay, okay." Um, so he got he gets mad. So Buck gets mad and go and slap um because uh, uh I forget who it was jumped outside. So when he when he slapped him. He he cut his finger. He, I mean, when he slapped, he, he hit it. I'm talking about he swung like I'm talking. About he swung and hit the helmet like he had on pads, right? And um, he cut his hand and and it opened up. So um, Coach Perlis had walked away, 
And then they was like, uh, he was like, get out of there. I'm talking about he dripping blood. I'm talking about blood <laughs> running from his head. <laughs> blood running from his hand, right? So, but he uh, but he won't leave, he won't, he won't get out of practice. So Sally was like, let me uh let me just put Sally and Jeff was like, let me put some tape around it, you know, just put some tape on it. So of I'm like, no, get Sally out of here. Jeff. <laughs> Let me put a pen. Let me put some tape on it. <laughs> right. So, 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 Perlis come over there. So, Perlis like, Buck, get out of there. We're not going to run another play until you get your hands, uh, until you get your hands wrapped up. Right? <laughs> so, so, Sally, so Sally was taking, you know how they got to clean it out and they got to clean it all out. So, they were taking their time. She put the ointment on it and this and that. So, Coach Buck got mad and just grabbed the tape. And just took the tape and just start wrap, wrapping it around his hand, right? With no bars, no nothing, right? So uh um, first said, I don't I don't believe it. He said, just go ahead, do what you want to do. <laughs> just imagine he's taking that white tape, right? And just I'm talking about uh they done wiped it off and they were taking too long to put it on. So he just grabbed a white tape and start he did his whole hand, like wrapped it. <laughs> <laughs> out of the practice, I'm talking about his hand was black as mine because he had to cut off the circulation. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is old school coaching at its best, right here. That's how it went down. Hey, hey. hey how, and, and say how many times? And save and have how many times? He said, "Saving, saving, live with Buck." Yeah, yeah, save, saving. How Buck come to Alabama all the time when Buck was there, like me, and, and talk to the uh, talk to the team all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want, hey, I'm wondering how many times Coach Buck slapped in his career. Okay, all right. So, okay, so okay, we're gonna tell you one that one wasn't related to football, but it was a football class. You know how the coaches had a football class, so air, all the students come in, uh, come in the, um, uh, yeah. come Coaching in the class, football. right? Yeah, yeah, the football class. Yeah, so yeah. Each coach take coach a take football. a shot. So, oh, Coach Buck came in, right? So he got mad. He said, uh, when, as soon as he walked in, he said, "What's going on in here?" Right? He was like, "Cause no football player was sitting in the front." Right? So he said, "No, uh, 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 all the football players go to the front." Right. Hey, 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 all the kids, y'all sit back. Y'all sit back. The football, the football players need to sit in the front, right? So John Buddy was sitting in the front, right? So he was talking about uh, uh, the night that he was coaching. He was talking about reactions, right? So then he slapped John Buddy, right? <laughs> like he was talking to the, he was talking, he was talking to the class, and you know it's more class, you know it's more more people that came into the football class because they want to know about the program in football. So he slapped uh he slapped John Buddy in the front, right? He was like, you know, he said he was just sitting there, he said, Yeah, you know, your reflexes and all that. He said he was telling something about reflex. He said, you know, and then he slapped John he said he, he I'm talking about he slapped and knocked his hair like <laughs> everybody <laughs> Everybody in the class, everybody in the class, in the, in the, the people, they were like, oh, my God, that's what he do to people. <laughs> so, so I'm talking about the only people, I mean, like the, like the people that was in the class, they were like, oh, my God. They were like scared. They were like, I'm glad he made us get to the back. <laughs> he right. made us get to the back because... I, <laughs> I'm talking about man. We could we could we could talk all day with about Coach Buck and the things that he do. You know, but, oh. that's old, old old school coaching. <laughs> right, old right. School. Hey, hey, yeah, you Lorenzo, can't do that. You talk, you... Did somebody talked about playing basketball? They said that Andre was a good hooper at the IM West. Oh um, my God. <laughs> how many fights? How many? You mean how many fights we got? Well, how many yeah, fights? yeah, that's what we're doing on the IM West fight. Cause, 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 uh, cause Andre gonna take the game over. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I don't care what he does, right? I don't care what time he go. He, oh, I'm talking about he go. I mean, he going hard. He, I mean, he a killer. He's doing. Oh, <laughs> when he playing basketball. He's serious about that now. He, he, 
And uh, you can't tell him, you know, when uh, when Izzo let him play, on the, when he played on the team, oh, my God, that was it. We didn't hear the last of that. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you got to know, Andre, Andre, Andre ran track and he played basketball. So, yeah, I guess, so that's three sports at Michigan State. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, so, um, so before if some people want to know, like, um, you know, your career at Michigan State, you know, after that, then you get drafted by the Houston Oilers. What was that feeling like? And what was it like, you know, now going to, you know, playing in Houston? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you know, like I said, you set goals high, you know, I'm, uh, I'm sitting there on draft day, right? So I'm like, like okay. We go all the way. Um, we go down to I say well after after Pittsburgh select, and they I think Pittsburgh had the number ten pick, so they took a um, they took a um, they took a uh, a DN. So I was like, man, I don't know where I'm going now. I said, well, it's only two places that I know I I can go, and that's with uh, Chicago and uh, or Buffalo. So I know Buffalo really wanted me bad, and uh, Mike Dicker wasn't gonna pass me up, you know, playing, you know, me playing in the cold. Um, so I know I, I know I would go. Come on, <laughs> and look, your, your ears perked on. He said, Buffalo, you like, right? right. <laughs> seconds. There we go. Houston, Houston, Houston took too long. The pick so Cincinnati jumped over there and took the uh they took a uh a defensive uh they, they took a uh they took a def- uh what a defensive guy. So when they took the defensive guy, then they then they came back and said the Houston Oilers has select Lorenzo White. So I'm like everybody yelling and you know happy, you know. I'm like, man, Houston, I'm like Houston got like three or four running backs, right? And I'm like, man. So I, I I was sitting down for a minute. I I was like, man, wait a minute, wait a minute. I said, well, Lord, whatever it is. So I mean, I'm just gonna go and do what I gotta do. So it ain't no mistake. So I get there. So I go. I get drafted by there. So I go there and um, start playing. And it, it's different because now they're they're running like they they like split. They run the run and shoot and the eye. So they got Mike Rozier, Alonzo Hasmith, Spencer Tillman from Oklahoma, Alan Pinker for uh from um Notre Dame, and they got uh Ray, a guy that played um uh, full bike uh at um uh, Purdue. So I get there, so I'm like, well, they must be not happy with what they, you know, with what they have. <laughs> so I get there. And I go there, and I'm like, man. So I'm playing, and then I'm like, okay. So I meet meet Jerry Glanville, so for the first time, and that was like a trip itself. Like you know, <laughs> meeting you know Jerry. So um, I get there, and it's like all us playing. I mean, everybody, you know. So I'm like, man, I'm I'm practicing hard. I'm doing what I have to do, but I ain't getting no uh, <laughs> I ain't getting no uh, play in the game, right? So I'm like, man. I'm like, what's going on? So I was like, you know, I have a meeting with him. And so the trading deadline come and the team, they, they had like, uh, well, they had me come in early. So I said, oh man, I'm traded. Right. So I get that. They tell me they ain't get me to trade me. Right. So I don't know what's going on because they done, I done left home and I'm over at the facility. So when I get to the facility, um, they tell me that. So I said, okay, well, they must be going to play me. So after that, after the, uh, after practice, I talked to my agent. He was like, "Yeah, we had you had like um, three teams acquire about you, right?" But Houston said they didn't get you to trade you. I said, "Okay, well, they must be gonna pay, uh, play me." So I get there, so I don't play that much. So then um, you see, um, not so not so much in. The, so I played a lot of I played special teams. So um, you see the one run that I got, like the one the ninety five yarder, you know, um, the kickoff. Yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, well, I, I, they they got they gotta uh, they gotta play me now, you know, so they don't. So Mike has a Mike Rosier has 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 a decent year, yeah, he has a decent year, and so I'm like, okay, so he held he held out of, he held out of camp. So now I'm coming there, I'm mad, 
you know, I'm mad. So I, I do the same thing I've been doing. I'm running it. So me and the bike, bike up quarterback had this little thing. He was like, low, listen, I ain't going to hold the ball. I'm going to dump it off to you, right? So now they already said, okay, well, I ain't got no hands because I was like, listen, I said, if I didn't have, I said, I couldn't catch the ball and I'm getting the ball at Michigan State. I mean, come on, man. That would be like, you know, Dre, Dre would have left for real. You know, if they would have if they would have if they would have thrown me the ball, I was like, man, I mean, I'm already 75% of the offense. And I mean, come on, you're gonna throw it to me too. So I mean, I, I'm gonna really have problems. So I was telling the guy that the, the guy that that one of the writers and he just bust out laughing. So I was like, uh, I said, but I'm I, I'm serious. I say I don't understand how you have I mean, you run the ball well, and the team know because they they um, they draft you. They know what you do. So um, we go on. So now, my, now me and the backup quarterback, we running third and we, we running third and second team. So now we killing the we killing the first string defense. And and it was only only like like two yard passes if if one. So now that's uh, – so when I get in there, so I'm – now now they got to play me. So Mike was still holding out, so now they put me in the game, and next day, you know, I'm, I'm playing well. I'm doing – you know, I'm getting 100 yards. So I'm like, man, I'm like, okay, I'm good now. So – but, you know, it's just t- touchy. You know, for me, it was just like patience. And, you know, my mom was like, man, you know, you're a good player, so you know what you have to do. So it, it's just patience. And that's how she kept telling me, just have patience. It's gonna work out for you, yeah. And I told Mama, I said that's a hard thing to do. Have patience, <laughs> you know. Have patience. You know, you can, you know that's, that's a hard. You know, I said I got a, I got a, I got a big ego. <laughs> so, but how, yeah, so you know, and I tell. No, go ahead. And and I tell kids, I tell kids to this day, you know, one thing about football. You gotta, um, you gotta work hard, and you gotta be your own person. You know what I mean, when it comes to you know thinking, because people can say a lot, a lot of stuff, and then you can take it and it'll mess up. You know, you know, it'll mess you up mentally, and then you know, especially in the pros, because I look at that and I was like, man, I see why people have problems. You know, and you know when they when they're playing, and you just never know the situation. You know, but I was in a situation, and you know. But like I like my mom said, you know, you just have to have that patience. And so when I talk to people, I say, you know, what you do is you 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 got to believe in you because if you don't believe in you, nobody nobody will, you know. So that's that's how that's how I took it when I went to Houston the whole time, and all the way until. But like I said, I work hard. I work hard when I was at Michigan State. I work hard when I was with the Oilers. Um, I remember the second year when they was getting ready to go to um they was getting ready to go to the run and shoot full time when we got Jake Party. So I went and tell them I should be traded because I told the general manager, I said, listen, I think I got more trade value than any any one of the running backs you got here. And he said, um, so I was like, I, I don't want to be traded because I don't feel like I, I can play because you already know. You here? You don't see me play. You don't see me practice. So you on? You know I can play. So he was like, "Okay, what if I tell you I give you a chance to uh, compete for the starting job?" I said, "Okay, I'm gonna shake your hand, get out here, and go call my mom and tell her uh, I'm gonna be starting." <laughs> <laughs> so, so what happened at the end of the year? That's what happened. They got rid of all the they got rid of all the other running backs and I was the starter. I yeah. mean, like I said, that's why, you know, I tell, you know, I can't say games, but I say you gotta you gotta have a strong mind and you gotta Well I... Yeah, everybody said they want another hour with you, which is true. We need that, you know. Facts, yeah. Yeah. So that is my sister. You know, look. There was one more. Well, some some other people talked about Warren Moon. Your time with Warren Moon and Hayward Jeffries. How about those guys with the Oilers? Man, listen. One thing, you know. One thing I always say, you know, when playing with Warren Moon, right? I wonder what would have happened 
if he would have came straight from college and played. I don't think nobody would have broke his record still to this day. Brady or nobody. You got to understand that man had five Grey Cups in Canada. Right. Yeah. Five Grey Cups in Canada. And still came, and, and at the time he was playing, um, he was in the top five. So just imagine with Marino and Elway and all those, uh, and all those guys playing. Yeah. So if he in the top five, what what you think would have happened if he would have played five years in the NFL? Mm. So yeah. Yeah. that's what I just always wanted. And and then like you know, I I and I love I love and I love to run and shoot because it showed a different uh a di- showed a different phase of my game that I can't catch the ball. And um, I can run the ball. We already knew that. But when it came down to catching and blocking, um, you know, that's what you had to do there. You know, you don't touch the ball as much, you know, as like, you know, I used to get mad when um, when Barry, them, Barry and uh, Thurman them, uh, getting the ball 400 times and I, uh, about 400 some times and I'm getting it. Um, I'm getting it at 250. You know, now you know how Javon so, and I you know. felt. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, um, so so straight. I, I straight. I must be set. I, I I must be set myself up for that one, huh? Right, you sure did. You walked right into that one. <laughs> no about it. Look at this stuff. Like this man ran the ball forty-eight times in one game. <laughs> Could you imagine if you got that? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> What was your highest carry? What was your highest carry game, Lo? Uh, 50, uh, 56. Uh, at that time, 57 would have tied it, but that's the day we, that's 57 would have, 57 would have tied it. But, um, when we were playing, uh, playing at Indiana for the Rose Bowl, everybody ran storm the field. <laughs> everybody storm the field. So I, I, I could eat. I couldn't even tie. I mean, the referee, everybody knew the referee looked at me and I looked at him. I told him to turn around. I said, look, look in the end zone. I mean, I'm talking about people who were running. I mean, they were running on the field. I heard you ever throw the, throw the ball to you. <laughs> but you know what? You know, when when you talk about a lot of carries, I think my my um I think the thing that I like is like when I carried a hundred and two, a hundred and two times in two games. But, a hundred and two in two games. Oh man! Man, look, two froze too. Look, <laughs> hey man. So honestly, I think he dropped. Is, is he in Florida right now? He lives in Florida, right? Yeah, he lives in Florida. He's down there. Yeah, I see him. Three of them. Storms, you see them storm? Yeah, I see him. <laughs> this storm over there. Man, it's raining like uh, it's thunder and lightning. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. thunder and oh, yeah, you know that's what rainstorms. Saw yeah. that lightning in the mm-hmm. background, man. Y'all here driving, so y'all be safe right, on that right. road. <laughs> no, I'm, yeah. I, I, I'm pulled over. I ain't driving in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hurricane season. No, that's that time of year. Hey, look, look, it's been great, man, having you on the show. We got to bring you on a live show when you come up this year. You coming up to a game, right? A live game. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I, I'm gonna be up. Yeah, I'm gonna be up for um the game. I'll be up for the um uh, uh probably that I'm gonna be up for the Washington State game and probably maybe one before that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, so, yeah we Let definitely want to have that. That's why you want to have a live show Tuesday. Maybe you can yeah. you know extend. The Man, show you know it's bit. always good uh talk to my fellow uh, Spartan dogs. So. Yes, sir. Yeah, we can talk to you about the origin of Spartan Dogs and all that stuff too when you get here, man. Because you, you got great stories, bro. We really appreciate the time coming on the show, man. Again, again, congratulations on your induction to the Michigan Sports Hall of Fame. Uh, love having you on. I, I, you know, technical difficulties are bringing you on and off camera and all this, but hey, we powered through it. Oh, this power through. Yes. Thank you to our our subscribers and our listeners, our fa- like our family for sticking through with. The- through the technical difficulties. But like you said, it's a live show and then we just roll with the punches, man. So uh, we lost, we lost two as well. So his, his connectivity froze him. Man, and I don't know, it was, so. We deal with it. Sometimes it's mother nature and, and, you know, technology doesn't, you know, agree with it. That's okay. Hey, they don't stop the show. You got to be patient. That's what we learned That's today. Said, yeah. Patience is a virtue. And, you know, thank all of you for joining our show. 
today. Do not forget to click that like and subscribe button. Please do that for us. And, you know, remember, we'll be back on Thursday at 8 o'clock. You know, it was a great show, Otis. You know, despite the technical difficulties, I think you got a, a chance for everybody to get the spirit of low Lorenzo White, the great Lorenzo White, and, and what he means uh, to, to Spartan Nation as a whole, as Choo Choo now rejoins us. I, 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 had to, I had to go call Javon when he said he had 57 rush. <laughs> We didn't play that connect too. <laughs> right. gotta, had to let him know that. Had to let him know. <laughs> well, hey, Chu, thanks for joining back. But, you know, any final words from you? No, man, it was a good show. You know, I was, uh, you know, listening there and it's, you know, always good. And, you know, we talked about, you know, Zoe said he's coming back for uh Washington wow. game and stuff yeah. like that. And, you know, we definitely got to have him on for a live show. Um, I think we can you know, go hours with him, but, uh, you know, just appreciate him, uh, you know, jumping on. Uh, but like you said, Stray, technical difficulties, we powered through it and uh, appreciate the listeners for uh, being there and sticking with us through there. It was a lot of fun. A whole lot of fun. And for Otis Wiley and J.U. Coker, I'm Jason Strayhorn. Have a, this, is, this is Sparta. Have a good night. God bless. And go great. Go white. Go white.